In this video, I will be going over an example of solving for inverse functions and showing you how to find the domain and range of inverse functions. So over here we have the question, if f of x, or if a function of x is equal to 2x plus 3, whole divided by x plus 1, where x is greater than 1, we have to first find our inverse function. And as I mentioned in the last video, what the first step to finding an inverse function is to simply write your function in the y is equal to your function form. So in this case, that's y is equal to 2x plus 3 whole divided by x plus 1. And from here, we know that when you're solving for an inverse function, you want to get x or your input alone because you want to solve for x in terms of y. So in order to do that, first we'll bring this over. You get y times x plus 1 is equal to 2x plus it's basically multiplying both sides by x plus 1. Then we can expand this to get y times x plus 1 times y is equal to 2x plus 3. Let's move all of the x's on the same side. So we get y times x minus 2x is equal to 3 minus y and then we want to separate our x's once again so we get x times y minus 2 is equal to 3 minus y and let's we'll just move over this y over 2 to get x alone and we get x is equal to 3 minus y divided by y over or y minus 2 and now what we need to do is just write this in the form that, that we're asked to write it in. So in terms of f inverse of x, so we write f inverse of x is equal to 3 minus x divided by x minus 2. So this right here is our answer for part A. All right, so now let's solve for part B. Part B asks us to state the domain and range of f inverse of x. So in order to answer this question, we have to revisit what an inverse function is. So let's say over here we have all of the inputs of our function, and over here all of the outputs of our function. And I know this is a pretty ugly diagram, but let's just go with it for now. So we know that the domain is a set of all inputs and our range is a set of all outputs. So to get from our input to our output we have to perform f of x and we know that to get from our outputs to our inputs we perform the inverse or the opposite of f of x which is f inverse of x. So speaking in terms of f of x this over here is our domain or all of the numbers that we enter into f of x and this over here is our range and this means that for f inverse of x this over here will be our domain because what we are doing with f inverse is we are inputting the output values of our function in order to get the input so the inputs of f inverse of x correspond to the outputs of f of x. And the same works over here where, well this is the domain of f of x, this will be the range or the set of all of the output values of f inverse of x. So therefore, if you want to find the domain and the range of f inverse of x, then all we need to do is find the domain and range of f of x and simply call the domain of f of x the range of f inverse and the range of f of x the domain of f inverse. Okay, so to find the domain and range of f inverse of x, let's look back at our question. Over here, it's already written out for us that the domain of f of x is greater than one. And we know that the domain of f of x corresponds to the range of f inverse of x. Therefore, the range of f inverse, the range of 
f inverse of x is x is greater than 1. And we know this because that is the domain of f of x. So now to find the domain of f inverse, the, the domain of f inverse of x, we need to find the range. This is equal to the range of f of x. So let's just rewrite this really quickly. f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 over x plus 1. f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 over x plus 1, where the domain of f of x is x is greater than 1. Now we need to find the range of f of x, or the set of all the output values. So to solve for the range, let's just plug in x is equal to 1. So we get from that 2 times 1 plus 3 over 1 plus 3. And we're doing this because we're finding the lowest possible value of our function, or the lowest possible output value. And we know that everything else will be greater than that because x can only be greater than 1, and it is only multiplied or only has positive coefficients. So 2 times 1 plus 3, and 1 plus 3, that is 5 over 4. So all values of f of x will be greater than 5 over 4. And as we know, the domain of f inverse of x is correlated to the range of f of x. So the domain of f inverse of x is f inverse of x is greater than 5 over 4.